What's up guys, it's Joe the Pro here, back at it again with another instructional video. Before this video starts, I need you to please drop a like on it, subscribe, hit the post notification bell. Today what we are going to be instructing you how to do is how to rebuild an Cubica AMF front roller. So, pretty much, you're going to have two casings and you're gonna have the bearing assembly on each side of it. And some tools you'll need for the job is a good hammer, small punch, pair of earplugs, I'll tell you why in a second. Um, these small roll pins for when we reassemble the bearing assembly. Uh, you're gonna need four of these pins to go through each assembly. Uh, flathead screwdriver and an Allen wrench set. And you might wanna have a few rags handy on the side. You're also going to need to have 16 screw 16 of those hex screws to replace the ones that you take out because you cannot reuse the screws you take out and finally you're going to need two of these brass bushings for the bearing assembly i know are, there are many different models of these i go with the brass ones that amf makes because they work fine all right everybody so what you are going to start off by doing to rebuild your front roller is you're going to have to remove each of these hex screws. There's 16 total on the whole roller. You're gonna find there's four, per, there's gonna be eight on each side and four on each casing. So there's 16 total, none in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my earplugs in now because in order to get these hex screws out, you're going to need to pound, pound on them a few times really hard and it's really loud when you do that and makes it so you can't hear for a few minutes if you don't use earplugs. So I'm gonna go ahead and give these screws a good pound. So basically what that does is it just kind of presses the casing, the part around the screw, and it kind of loosens up the screws because they've been sitting in there for a while. Um, so as you'll see here, there's a little bit of gunk in that one. So I'll take one of the smaller Allen wrenches, smallest one on the set, and I'm just gonna go ahead and clean that gunk out of there real quick so we don't strip out the screw and have another nightmare on our hands. All right, so you also may need a machine rod just to help you leverage out those screws. So you're gonna take your Allen wrench, you're gonna put it in the screw. Might wanna pound on the end a little bit. Just make sure it's all the way in there. And take your rod, put it on the end of the Allen head, and go ahead and twist it out of there and it should loosen up like that. So I usually just get them loose and go from there. So I'm gonna do the rest, the rest of these off camera. All right guys, so I've removed all 16 of the hex screws. So you'll find once you remove them, you can pull each assembly out like that. So there's one, there's two. So go ahead and throw these over there. Um, just lift. You can go ahead and check out your casings. These ones look pretty good that came off of here. Just make sure that none of the screw holes are ovaled out. Um, on the bottom one, you're gonna get a lot of, eh, this one's actually not that bad. You might get some debris. So just go ahead and put them in the trash can like that. What you're gonna start out by doing is you can see that some super genius went ahead and welded these ones in. So I'm gonna have to get my angle grinder out, grind them down and recut the slices in there. All right guys, so I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this in the vise. And you should not have to do this, but somebody went ahead and welded these ones for us to make the job extra. Nine. Sorry guys, I got interrupted by a call. But go ahead, clamp your 
bearing assembly into the vise. I have my angle grinder with a 40 grit flap disc. I'm just gonna go ahead and smooth it out. So as you can see, I did both pins. So I'm gonna go ahead, because I can't pound the uh, roll pins out like you're supposed to. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pound these pins out. So they sit right there, as you can see. Pound them out. So as you can see, it's giving right now. Second one. So as you can see, that small roll pin goes in each side. I'll show you how to rebuild them the right way once I get them apart. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and recut the slats. So that cleaned up pretty nice, as you can see. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Now that is how those should look after you disassemble it. And now you'll see that you can get that nice bushing out of there as well. Sometimes it can be a pain. There you go. So now, as you can see, this one is very up for replacement throw it right out guys so now that we have our bearing assemblies taken apart what do we do every single time it's the same step every time we always clean the what we are rebuilding so gonna come back we're gonna get our rags some wd-40 and i left the bearings on there because these bearings are still good on both assemblies. So we'll leave those alone, but we are going to coat these in WD-40 and clean them out from there. These ones aren't too bad. I've seen a lot worse. Take the other one, coat WD-40. And go back to the first one. And go ahead and take any of this debris that you, sometimes you'll see old lacing from old carpets on them. And, but now you can just go ahead and wipe them off. So while I do this, you guys can take the time to drop a like and hit subscribe so we can keep making instructional videos like this. 
All right, guys, so now that you have your bearing assemblies all cleaned out, you are going to, first of all, I would check these bearings just to make sure that they're all good. And they are, because I already checked them earlier. So now you're going to start getting your stuff to reassemble these housings. So you're going to start by grabbing your copper bushings, your pins, and your roll pins, and your flathead screwdriver. So come on over here, and you are going to start by taking your pins out of the packaging, all four. Throw out your bags. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now take my roll pins Pull out four, one for each pin. So, as you're about to see, what I like to do, due to the complexity of putting these roll pins in, what I like to do is pre-install one of them on each of the pins. So I'll go to my metal desk here. I'll line up one of the roll pins with the roll with the pin. Oh, and maybe it'll be easier if I do it up here for now. So line it up like so. Gear, grab your hammer, make it straight, and tap it. So this way, so you kind of want to make it even on each side like that. So this way, you at least have one started in there so it's a lot easier to do it this way. So you have one started, that way you only have to pound in four of them in the housing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this for each. three and finally our last one right here try to make them even if you can it's just my OCD kicking in and your final finally your fourth one so now I'm gonna take all these since you're gonna to want to have them pre-coated in oil I'm gonna put them in this nice cap I have with the bushings swirl them around a little bit in there get them nice and pre-coated like so so take one of your housings same process for both of them um, you might want to do this over a towel if you don't have a metal desk like I do. But you're going to kind of want to spread out both pieces of your housing like this. Now, I personally, I don't grease these. I just coat them in oil like how I am right now. I have a, I have a jug that I soak them in. I'm not sure where that went. I have it over on my table right there. I have a bunch of them in that jug that just are soaking in oil. So take one of them. Can put some more oil in it if you want. And you're gonna wanna, you're gonna notice that there's a grease fitting here. So if you do take the time and grease them, you can have access to that grease fitting if you line it up with this. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And I'm gonna place my bushing in there. Push it inward, like so. Sometimes it can be a pain. Of course, now that I'm explaining it to everybody, it's going to be, but that's okay. Reapply some oil in there. So, try to sneak it in there. Oh, you're gonna kinda do it like that. And then, you're gonna see that you'll be able to sneak that part in and then just put it in between there. 
So now you're gonna line up your holes like that and take two of your pins that you have soaking in the oil and install them on each side. So you got one right here. And take another one and put it in the second one like this. Pretty straightforward. And you may need your hammer to assist you to drive them in. You don't gotta go crazy. You should, you should just have to tap them. And if they do not want to go in, that means that one of them is not lined up. So this one was not lined up completely. So I'm gonna go ahead and try again. And as you can see, it's going right in. So I'll wait till it's all the way pounded in. Go to your second one, do the same process. And your roll pin should sit in that groove that we cleaned out earlier. So now, as you'll see, those pins are fully in place. Flip it over. And now you'll see that the ends of them are poking out this end. So what you're gonna do, take two more of your roll, your roll pins, like this. And for your first one on the inner housing, you're gonna go ahead, just place it in there. Try to put the open part of the roll pin on the downside. I forget that all the time myself. So this little open groove in your roll pin, you want facing down. So when you drive it in, you don't break the roll pin. So try, you're gonna wanna try to make this pin even with the top, like that. Throw this in your vise. Tighten it. All right. And now take your flathead screwdriver and try to tap in your roll pin. And you'll see it protrudes out the other end. Hopefully. Yep. You'll see the oil push out. Like that. So now I see mine poking out this end right there. Oh, there goes my glove. See it come out this end right here. And then you know it's in there all the way. So now what I do, what you're, you, what you're going to want to do. So as you'll see, even though I've replaced all the parts in here, there is still a little bit of wobble in there. So what you're going to want to do, position your housings like this and you're going to want to clamp each of these in the vise. And what that'll do, that'll tighten up the difference between those pins so they'll stay nice and tight in there. So you don't gotta go crazy, but tighten up your vise and ju just pinch them. Oh, see I missed. So you're gonna wanna just pinch the tops, just like that. That. Flip it over, do the other side, don't forget. And finally the fourth one. All right, so after you do that, now you're, you can still have wobble this way, up and down. So put it back in that position, and you're gonna pinch it this way now. Open your vise, and you're gonna wanna line up the jaws of the vise just under where the pins go in. So line it up like so. Make sure it's lined up on both sides, and go ahead and pinch. This one you can go a little harder on. So pull it out, repeat the same process for the other side. So flip it over, go the long way around. Line up your pins, both sides, and pinch. All right, so now that you do that, now there is no slop at all in these housings. You can go up and down, side to side, no slop whatsoever. 
That's how you want both housings. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the, the process on the other housing that I have sitting here because we need two to make one good front roller and I will be right back with you guys. All right guys, so now that you have both your bearing assemblies rebuilt, you're going to take both your housings, lay them down flat on your table. And now you're going to notice that there's a little lip on each of these housings. So the bearing housings will slide in and they will sit in that lip, kind of like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the other one, the same, you have to make sure that they're facing up the exact same way. So you'll see that's the rotational side. Slide it in. So now at this point, it, the roller housing should not be touching the bench. The two bearing housings should. So you might have to slide one of them out just a little bit, but you're gonna go ahead and slide the top casing over the top, over the bearing housing. So, see that one slid in like that? And come back over to the other side, the long way around, and slide that one in just like that. And all your holes should start to line up. So now I'm gonna get my impact gun out and we'll start fastening some screws in. All right guys, so I've got my impact gun out and here are the replacement screws for the roller housing. So we can put this all back together. So as you'll see, the replacement screws, they have Loctite already implanted into them. So what I'm going to do, there's 16 of these screws on this roller and we're just gonna start fastening them in. So you're gonna go around and do this to the whole roller. All right guys, so now that you got all your screws in, I would just go and double check, make sure each of them are nice and tight. So I'm gonna go through all of them just once more, double check all of them, and then I'll show you the next step. All right guys, so now you see I've moved it to the floor, and what we are going to do is, for, after you tighten all your screws, you're gonna take either a bench grinder, it's hard doing it that way, or your angle grinder and just go ahead and go over each head of, scr of the screw to make the surface smooth. All right guys, so as you can see, we've ground down the screws on each side of the roller. And now, the way you check to make sure your roller is good as you can lift it up and take both sides and if there's any play in between that means that you have to do the job that we just did so obviously there's no play in this one so that means we have a good front roller now so i appreciate you guys for watching this video um i ho hope you guys understood everything if you have any questions about the process or any suggestions please let me know in the comments or shoot me an email and they will be greatly appreciated. Thank you all for watching. Please hit subscribe and do it like a pro. We'll see you in the next one.